Section 1.1, Patterns and Expressions. The objective for today is to identify and describe patterns. What I'd like you to do with these notes when you have a homework assignment of watching the video is to watch the, either watch the video and not take notes or watch the video and take notes as fast or as slow as you want to. Uh, just so that you know, you can always use notes on quizzes. They have to be your own. Um, you may not um, share them with others. Um, they're for you only, and you can write as much or as little as you'd like. You are playing a video game. You reach a locked gate. The lock is a square with nine sections. You can make a key by placing a red or yellow block in each section. Near the gate is a carving of a pattern of squares. So here's the first three squares. What I want you to do is look at the squares to see how the pattern emerges. And what we want to do is we want to figure out what the eventually what the eighth um, in the pattern will be. They do go to the right. So this one goes to here, and then this one goes down to that one. So what I want to do is figure out, first of all, what is the fourth one in the pattern, and then we'll try to figure out what's the eighth one. So here's the grid. And it's just a three by three square. And then we want to figure out where the red ones will be and where the gold ones will be. So if I look at the first one to the second one, I notice that if I turn it to the right, a quarter turn, all those yellows will rotate that same way. And then if I look and see if my pattern is right, if I go from the second one to the third one and rotate it one quarter turn, it will match. So when I rotate this one a quarter of a turn again, um, what am I going to see? I'm going to see the pattern look like this. I'm gonna do the yellow ones first. So if I rotate that third one a quarter of a turn, this box right here will be in the top corner. So it's going to be right here. This box right here will be in the middle still because that one will always stay in the middle. This one will go down here. And then this one will go here. So it's just gonna rotate one quarter turn. So let's see if I have that right. This one will go up, that one will go to the right, this one will go down, yep. Um, and then I'm gonna color the red ones in there. Now, if you think about what this pattern is going to do again, if I rotate this one more time, um, it will actually start over. So, um, Rotating one more time uh, repeats the pattern. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to try to figure out what is going to be in the eighth one. So if we count this one as one, this will be two, this will be three, this will be four, and if it repeats, this will be five, this will be six, this will be seven, and this will be eight. So the eighth pattern, or the eighth rotation, or eighth key is this one. Because if you ever look at patterns, once you figure out how, how long it's gonna take to repeat it, um, they just keep going and going and go, going like that. So the eighth key is going to look just like the fourth one. Um, let's see, we've already done this. It is above. Here's problem number one. Look at the figures from left to right. What is the pattern? Um, I couldn't find any colors that um, of shapes that look the same. So it's not color, it's just the pattern or the, the number of sides. So when you look at this one, this one has three sides. This one has four sides. This one has 
five sides and the next one has six sides. Um, basically the pattern will be adding a side to each one. So add one more side each time or each um, figure, I should say, figure. Each additional figure. Um, you can pause the video now to look at this got it question and see if you can come up with the answer that I do. So for got it number one, look at the figures from left to right. What's the pattern? Draw the next figure in the pattern. So you do have to explain the pattern in words. You also have to draw the next pattern. Okay, so as I look at this, you start with a red one in the middle. Each one of them has a red in the middle, so that's not really something that's going to change your pattern. But if you look at the number squares um, going out from each one, going this way, this way, this way, and this way, notice how in the first one you have one yellow square on each side. The second one you have two yellow squares. The next one you have three yellow squares. So in the next one, I'll assume that we're going to have four yellow squares. Okay, so these are not going to look quite the same because I don't have a lot of space. So I need four squares out here. And now I need to color them appropriately. So each of these out here are yellow. The one in the middle is going to stay red. So as we talk about what we're going to write for the actual description of the pattern, you can do a lot of different things, but it does have to be pretty precise. Okay, so there's my, pat, my uh, figure right there. And now I also need to describe it. So um, each figure, where am I gonna do this? has a red square in the middle. Each additional figure adds one square to each side. Okay, so be specific. Um, make sure that you don't just assume that that's what it is. You have to do these patterns so that if someone else that has no idea what you're doing um, can read it and, and draw that picture, then you know you have it. Um, next, we're gonna look at some vocabulary. Mathematical quantities are anything that can be measured or counted the value of the quantity, its measure, or the number of items that are counted. Constants are quantities whose values do not change. Variable quantities are quantities that do change, depending on what the variable is assigned. Excuse me. A symbol that represents one or more numbers is a variable. Numerical expressions are mathematical phrases that contain numbers and operation symbols. Algebraic expressions are those that contain one or more variables. And tables are easy ways to organize data and discover what patterns are. So the next couple of questions, we're gonna do tables so that we can figure out how can we use tables to figure out what that pattern is. Especially when we need to figure out the 20th, the 20th figure or the 108th figure or the 1000th figure, we don't wanna to have to draw all of them. So we wanna have, we want a way that we can figure out what that pattern is without drawing each particular one. So problem two, how many toothpicks are in the 20th figure? Well, we don't want to draw this 20 times. 
we want to just um, maybe draw the next one to see how it changes and then um, go from there. So in the first square or the first figure, there are four toothpicks. So I would have just start writing um, what the output needs to look like. And then we'll figure out what the process column is in a minute. So if we look at the second figure, notice we have four in this one. And we also have four toothpicks here. So we have eight altogether. And in the third one, we have four in the first square, four in the second square, and four in the third square. So we have 12. So what we need to do from here on out is try to figure out a pattern. So is it one, and whatever you do, you have to use your input column as part of that pattern. You can't just say, you know, take the number times four or whatever. It has to have this input column as part of it. So for instance, could we do one times four equals four? That one works. But does two times four equal the next number? Yep. Three times four. So notice that this number right here is your input number. And then you have to do something to it. So your process column could be adding a number to it. It could be multiplying a number. It could be dividing. It could be a combination of the two. So whatever you do, you have to figure out what you can do with these input numbers to make it into the output number. So if we are multiplying all these numbers by four, your pattern is pretty much four times n. Okay, so in the, they want us in the 20th figure, that might be on the next page. Nope, it's this page. In the 20th figure, so we'll go 20, we're gonna take four times 20, which is 80 toothpicks. Okay, so your pattern ended up being the expression four times in. So we could find the 1,000th member, we could find whatever member we wanted now that we have our pattern. What is an expression that describes the number of toothpicks in the nth figure? Okay, we already did that, that's the 4n. So what is the pattern in algebraic form? And here's got it question number two. Um, let's pause, you can try it yourself, and then we can go over it together. Got it, number two. How many tiles are in the 25th figure in this pattern? Show a table of values with a process column. So you'll want to do this very same thing when you are doing the problems that ask for a process column of work. Okay, so my table's on the next page. Let's just look at each one and just figure out what's different in each one. So in the first one, notice there are four tiles. In the next one, there are six tiles. And the next one, there are eight tiles. Those are the three numbers we're going to put in the far right column when we continue. Okay, so in the first one, there are four tiles. Whoops. In the second one, there are six tiles. In the third one, there were eight tiles. We want to know, and pretty much you can skip this one, we want to know how many for the nth one. So you can't just, um, you know, say, okay, I want to add three to it, okay? Because one plus three is four. Two plus three is not the same thing. Two plus three is five rather than six. And three plus three is six rather than eight. So this one is definitely not an adding question. Um, it's definitely not a subtracting question since the numbers get larger. Uh, maybe it's a multiply question. Um, is one times four is four. 2 times 4, though, is 8. So remember, when you're doing this, you're doing this process to the input column. So um, it's not a division question because the numbers are getting bigger as well. So maybe it's a combination question um, where you have to do two things in order to get to the answer. So it looks like even numbers, but it's not starting with 2. Um, another thing that you might be thinking is maybe since this one adds two each time, that that would be the pattern. It isn't because it's not taking into account that initial input number. So you can't just do what is it doing. Um, each of these adds two every time. It's what is it doing to the input 
um, to get there. So what I'm thinking is maybe we take our number times two and then add two. So my number this time is one, so I'm gonna replace this thing with one. Two times one is two, two plus two is four. Um, does it work for the next one? Two times two, because remember this is my input number. The input number goes right there. Two times two is four, four plus two is six. Two times three is six, six plus two is eight. So remember, those underlying numbers are the input numbers. So it looks like it's working. So my process then is two times my input plus two. And of course, we don't need that one because there's not a number in there. So when we look at, what did we want? The 20th one, 25th one. So in the 25th one, you would take two times 25 plus two which is 50 plus two or 52. So there would be 52 tiles in the 25th set. Problem three, you want to set up an aquarium and need to determine what size tank to buy. The graph shows tank sizes using a rule that relates the capacity of the tank to the combined lengths of the fish it can hold. This one says C page six for the graph. I didn't put that on here. Um, looking at the graph, we have capacity on the Y axis. We have combined length of the fish on the X axis. Um, notice the numbers are going up by ones in each of those positions. Uh, sometimes when they give you graphs, they go up by different numbers. So pay attention to the Y especially. Uh, sometimes they do change the um, X's as well. So they have a line in there. Um, it says, if you want five two inch platies, four one inch guppies and a three inch loach, which is the smallest capacity tank you can buy, 15 gallon, 20 gallon or 25 gallons. So they wanna know the smallest capacity of 15, 20 or 25 with each of these um, fish in there. It says use a table to find the answer. So the first thing you'll want to do is look at the graph because that's kind of where all your information is. You'll want to pick three ordered pairs that you can name exactly what they are. The book shows zero, two. That's a good one. Uh, the book also shows five, seven. Um, let's go with four, six. Actually, let's go five, seven because that's my input. You could go um, anything outside of these as well. And then they also chose 10. So if you look at the graph, 10 goes up to 12. Okay, so the input are the first numbers, the outputs are the second numbers. So the output on this one would be two, the output on the five ordered pair would be seven, and the output on the 10 ordered pair would be 12. So these numbers, Are the output numbers. Next, how do we figure out what the process is? So when I look at this one, um, looking from the input zero to the output two, maybe they're adding two. Adding is always the easiest one. If I look at the next one, and of course that one would be zero plus two would equal two. Um, if that works on the next one, does five plus two equal seven? Yes. Okay, so these match. Does 10 plus two equal the output? Yes. So on this one, it looks like they are adding two um, to get to that pattern. Now, what we need to do next is we need to figure out if they want each one of these, how, how big of tank should they get? Okay, so the next part of it again is we need to look at what they want. They want five two inch platies, four one inch guppies, and a three inch loach. Okay, so five two inch platies. We're going to go five plus two is seven. They're going to do 
Okay, so we need to know the length of the fish so we can get the right size tank. So I'm gonna go back. I did this part wrong. Um, we're looking at the length only. So we have five platies and in the directions it says they are two inches. So here we have 10 inches of fish. Um, and the next one they have four one inch fish. So that would be four total inches in the guppies. And then they have one three inch loach. So one times three equals three. So the total number of inches there would be 10 plus four plus three, which would be 17 inches. And um, we look at the tank that is the closest to that one, which is the 15 would be out. We'd either have to go with the 20 or the 25. The one that's the closest is the 20 inch tank. So we will go with that one. You can pause the video now and try got it question number three. Um, the graph on page six shows the total cost of platies at the aquarium shop. So we're using the same question. They're just looking at um, a different question at the end. So look at the table on the bottom of the page, not the table on the top of the page. So it's the same style of question, but a different graph. This one, they don't have a line drawn. They only have the dots on the graph. So um, you can pick from any of those ordered pairs. So when you're looking at it, it would be zero, zero. It would be one, two. Your X coordinate would be two. Your Y would be four. And then the only other one they have is three, which goes to six. So your input, remember, is your first number. Your output is your second number. So zero, zero, one, two, two, four, three, six. And then we want to know what the N one is. So we look at, could we add something to it to get to the other one? Well, you can't add something to zero and get zero and then actually have the numbers increase. So that is out, but maybe, and it's going up, so we're not dividing or subtracting. Maybe we just multiply times something. So I'm gonna skip the first one since it's zero and zero. Could we multiply one times two and get two? Yes. Could we multiply zero times two and get zero? Yes. Could we multiply two times two and get four? Yes. So this first number is your input. The second number is just what you're doing. So three times two would then be six. So it's two N. And they want to know how much do six platies cost? Two times six would be $12. How much do 10 of them cost? 10 times two would be $20. And then last question, why is the graph in problem three a line while the graph at the right is the set of points? Um, basically, it's because the number of platies oops, has to be a whole number because you can't have partial number of things, but the um, lengths can be fractions and decimals. So basically they're not including every single point that's on the line like they are um, in terms of problem three, they have the x-axis is the length. You can have a variety of lengths. Here, the x-axis is the number of platies. Um, you can't have half a platy and have it live. So um, the graphs are different because of the units that are needed for each of those. So go ahead and rewatch this whenever you want to. Um, use it as you're, you're working on the problems tomorrow in class. Um, and come with questions, please.